Hello, I'm Piers Corbyn from weatheraction.com, successful long-range weather and climate forecasters. And today, the 10th of October in London, marks the success of our warm early October forecast for Britain and Ireland and indeed uh, many other places too. Um, but the point of today's report is to discuss the implications of this fifth assessment report from the United Nations Climate Committee, otherwise known as the IPCC, who recently gave a presentation at the Royal Society on the 2nd and 3rd of October, a meeting which I attended. Now, that meeting gives a different feel from a very similar meeting of three or so years ago. This time, the researchers and students were much more willing to engage with us, whereas before they dismissed us as nutters. The leadership, however, the bishops of delusion of CO2, as I call them, they were much less willing to engage in any real discussion or real answers to the crucial questions now putting them in crisis. Right, the key issue, of course, is that the world has not warmed like they said, and indeed all their predictions for the last 13 years have failed. So, the answer in the name of evidence-based science has to be, you scrap their theory. But they weren't interested in entertaining such a thing. During the discussion, it was meant to be a discussion meeting, most of the questions for which they refused, if they were from us, but nevertheless, it was, questions were asked. Benny Pizer from the Global Warming Policy Foundation, he asked, if by 2020 there's still no warming or even cooling, will you scrap the theory? Their answer to that was, well, we've got many reports to look at before then. What does this mean? I asked quite explicitly, look, in the name of science, all your theory has failed, you therefore must scrap the theory. No answer. I also pointed out that it was only through Lord Data that they were able to argue that it was somehow warming. Okay. Now, you see, they have changed the facts, and I pointed this out. Now, what their answer was, was to the effect, oh, the data we put up is real. Uh, I said, yes, yes, it may be real, but what you've left out is the crucial issue. They systematically reduce the number of stations by about 60%, which they were using, in order to make it look colder in the past and warmer in the present. Now, by any stretch of the imagination, this is Enron economics. It's fraud. Now, very specifically, they said that the last 30 years have been warmer than anything else in the last 1400. Really? Now that means the medieval warm period did not exist. However, we know Greenland was called Greenland because it was warm, mild, farmable when discovered. And now, today, they're digging up excavations and finding evidence of the farming done then. That was less than 1400 years ago. So what they're saying is untrue. The next thing is that they claim, well, the only lack of warming is in the surface temperatures. Well, where else are you going to see warming? Because that's what it was all about, surface temperatures. But then they said, oh, there's been heating, which you can't see, sort of can't see. The atmosphere has been warming and somehow the warmth has been jumping into the sea and warming the deep ocean. So one of our people asked quite explicitly, well, okay, what is the evidence of this? Where is the milli-degree warming of bottom-of-the-sea fish like skate? Are they distressed by this? What is the evidence? No answer. I asked explicitly for what evidence do you have of carbon dioxide warming the current 
climate. And I asked them that last time and they gave an answer, which was nonsense, but they did give an answer. This time, complete refusal to even contemplate an answer. I asked them also, did they accept the recent analysis by Beck of the fact that in the past uh, carbon dioxide levels using the same method of measurement as they use for Mona Loa now, that's where they have their standard, show that twice in the last 200 or 250 years CO2 levels exceeded 0.04%, which is their danger level. They wouldn't even discuss this. Uh, and I said, look, the, the evidence there is at least as strong as the evidence you're using from computer models, which fail. So you have to answer that. No answer. They similarly talk very little about the Arctic, which is curious because on the media they talk a lot about it. The reason why they talk little about it is because they know they're on very dodgy territory, namely fraud. BBC dishonesty, to say the least. There was an interesting discussion, uh, in fact, uh, and you know, we have to give them credit for that, on why their models fail. And one big thing they pointed out was that the jet stream under carbon dioxide theory doesn't show big waves as we are experiencing now. Okay, so they bemoaned the fact that their models only show little wobbles in the jet stream, which is normal sort of situation. They don't show big swings. Well, I said, look, our solar lunar action technique theory of the sun driving what happens, modulated by the moon, automatically gives big swings in the jet stream as observed. Are you interested? Silence. They just wanted to move on to the next issue. They're doing everything possible to justify their theory. And their main concern was presentation and so forth. And it was a bit like a political meeting of failed politicians trying to get their message through. The most important general point I was able to make at this meeting was that I asked them, look, aren't you misleading the world? The world is now heading for, and it is in the beginning of, a mini ice age. This is going to be a crisis for agriculture. It means cold. It means jet stream near the equator. Not further north, as your thing said. It means a whole lot of different scenarios to what you expect. The consequence of what is going to happen will be food crisis. A lot of big problems, economic crisis, due to cold stuff. Now, they're pointing the world in the wrong direction, and this will cost misery and lives. So I urge you to tackle politicians and say, you reject all of the policies flowing from the warmists, no to the prayer wheels, that's the wind farms, no to the surcharges on energy prices. Already you're paying 25% on top. And if they carry on with this delusional nonsense, every family in the country, in the United Kingdom at least, will be paying £125 extra per, per, uh, per year. And same all over Europe and many countries, but not in Australia anymore, because thankfully the government has changed on these, these matters. And I would say that the first political party to seriously reject the global warming nonsense proposition will win the general election in Britain. Thank you.